Okay, now we're going to talk about loops. And a loop is just a structure that allows you to repeatedly execute your VBA code. And there are four types of loops, a do while loop, a do until loop, a for each loop, and a for next loop. And we're going to look at all four of them. And the first one we're going to look at is a do while loop, which is going to continually execute code while a condition is true. And it's going to stop when that condition is false. So let's let's look at this more concretely. I have a sheet here called loops. And now I can go to my editor. I also inserted a module. I went insert module and it inserted a, inserted a module. And then I changed the name using the properties window to loops. Once I did that, I can now write some code. So I'll do option explicit. And then I'll write a sub procedure called test do while. And now I can do a couple things. Um, now we can start writing some serious VBA code. And when I say that, I mean we can use all the objects that we saw in the Excel object uh, browser video and the Excel object model video. And really the whole idea of the classes that Microsoft gives you, they give you objects and all these properties, functions, sub procedures, and events. Now you can use them. So let's start using them. First thing I want to do is select the sheets. So to select the sheet, you do you do this. Sheets. And then you put the name of the sheet you want to select. Dot select. Remember this dot is the dot operator. And it allows you to select the properties, functions, and sub procedures. It allows you to access them. Once I select that sheet, so this is a, a sub procedure on this object. Once I select that sheet, I can select all the cells, or not select them all, but I can clear the contents of all the cells. So if I do cells dot uh, clear contents here, that will clear all the cells contents. And I'm doing this so that when I run my code, it's going to clear out the worksheet. So that's why I wrote these two lines. It selects the sheet I want, and it and it clears out any values on the worksheet. Now I can start writing the do while loop. So here's how you write a do while loop. You write the word do while, the words do while, and those are keywords. And then you write a, a condition that you want to check. The condition I want to check is this cell A1. I want to check what's in it. So you can do that by doing this, range A1 dot value. And I want to check that value and I want to say loop while that value is less than two. And then I'm going to end the loop with the word loop. So this is the this is the basic framework of a loop, of a do while loop. You have your keywords do while, you have your condition that's going to be checked, and as long as this condition evaluates to true, you're going to run some code in in here, and and you're going to, you're going to run that code. And then it's going to fall to this loop line, which is the closing line of the loop. And once it hits the loop line, it's going to jump back up to the top. So let's let's write some code that we want to execute. Let's just add one to whatever's in this cell A1. To do that, I'm just going to do range A1.value is equal to whatever's in that range plus one, like this. So all this line of code does is add one to whatever's in this cell. And now we have a do while loop. That's that's our structure. The main point is that this code that I highlight here is going to repeatedly execute while this condition is true. So if we step into this, right here at this line of code, it's going to evaluate this condition. Range A1.value less than 2. Is that true or false? When I say evaluate, I mean it's going to evaluate it uh, to true or false. And this is going to be true because there's nothing in A1. So nothing is less than 2. So it's going to, it's going to run the code. And it's going to put the value 1 in range A1.value. And why did it do that? Because there was nothing there before. It just added 1 to nothing. Now it goes down to the loop line. And all the loop line does is say, go back to the top of the loop. So if I execute this again, there, it went back to the top of the loop. 
And now we're executing this, con we're evaluating this condition again. And this condition changed because the value before in range A1 was nothing. Now the value is 1. So it's going to evaluate is 1 less than 2. And that evaluates to true. Since it evaluates to true, it's going to run the code. And here's the code. It's going to add 1 to what's ever in that cell. So if I hit this, it just changed to 2. And now it goes to the loop line. And all that loop line does is say, go back to the top of the loop. It goes back to the top of the loop. Now it evaluates the, the condition again. Our condition has changed because this, this value is now 2 before it was 1. Uh, and 2 is not less than 2. So a do-while loop, once it, once it encounters uh, false, once it evaluates this condition and the result is false, it stops. And so we'll see it stop right here when I hit step into it just jumped over these two lines. Once this evaluated to false, the do while loop stopped and it's it goes to whatever's whatever's below it. In that case it's in our case it's the n sub. So that's all a do while uh, loop does. It just loops and does and executes that code while this condition is true. And if I run this again, now we could, you know, just to show you, I could do this up to a thousand, or no, I'll do it up to one, 120, 124, and let's just step into it. So I put this code here. I select the sheet, and now watch this value disappear. That's why I put the cells that clear contents. So that value disappeared, and now if I just hit enter, if I just hit run, watch what happens. It it did that code really fast. It did this line of code 124 times. That's the power of VBA is that you can execute code repeatedly really, really fast. That's why VBA is so popular and it's so useful in business and in finance and engineering and um, all kinds of different fields because of what I just showed you. This is a very trivial example, but it shows the power that if you wanted to go in here and add one to that cell, it would take you, I don't know, a minute or so. Um, with VBA, it took less than a second. Uh, another point about a do while loop is that you can move this while and the condition to the bottom like this. So you can do this. You can do do at the top. And then you can execute your code and then check and then loop while your condition evaluates to true. And what this does is that instead of, instead of checking your condition at the top, it checks it at the bottom. Um, in our case, you know, if I run this again and I hit run, it still evaluates to the same answer, 124, but sometimes you might you might want to just do the code first instead of checking the condition first. So when I brought this this highlighted portion to the bottom line of the loop, uh, the condition doesn't get checked until after some code is executed, right? So the first time through the loop, um watch this uh if i comment out this clear contents watch what happens uh, if i step through this now it selects the sheet and it does the code it's it didn't check any conditions up top so it's going to do the code which is going to add 124 it's going to add 1 to 124 right so it added now i got 125 and now it checks the condition and it, it stops because 125 is not less than 124. But if I put it at the top, if I take this and put it at the top and I run it, 125 is, is it less than 124? That evaluates to false. So it's not going to execute the code. It's just going to jump to the bottom. But watch this. If I move it back to the bottom, 
and I run the code again, look what happens. Because you move the while and the check of the condition to the bottom, I am going to run the code. And there you go. I, I have 126 here now. So you're allowed to move you're allowed to move this highlighted portion. You could put it at the top like this, or you could put it at the bottom like we just saw. And what that does is that the first time you run the code, you know, the very first time you run the code, you are going to do something. Uh, you're, you're no doubt you're going to do something. So imagine this is the first time I run the code, okay? If I run the code with, with this highlighted portion at the top, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to. I'm not going to evaluate this line because it's going to say it's going to do the it's going to check something. 126 is not less than 124, so it finishes. But if you want to run the code no matter what the first time the first time the first time through the loop. When I say the first time, I mean the first time through the loop and you want to guarantee you're going to do this code, well then just move move the while and the check of the condition to the bottom. And, you're, and that will allow you to run the code. So now I'm going to run this code, and now I'll get 127. Even though it doesn't meet the condition, well, I don't mean that. I mean, even though maybe the, in the previous version you didn't want to do that. So that's, that's the uh, option you have. If you want to run this, the code in between your, in your loop the first time through the loop, then and you always want to do that always run it the first time without checking a condition then move it down to the bottom move this while range a one dot value the check of the condition in the word while move it down to the bottom if you don't necessarily want to run the the code the first time through the loop and you want to check the condition then just leave it at the top most times you leave it at the top because you're going to be wanting to check some condition but if you don't you can move it to the bottom um, that is a do while loop. It keeps looping uh, until it it keeps looping while this is true, and it's going to stop when this condition is false. This brings up the idea of an infinite loop, which is a loop that loops infinitely many times. It just never stops, and we could we could write an infinite loop like this: one equal one. Remember, a do while loop. It loops as long as it loops while a condition is true. And if the condition is always going to be true, then you're always going to execute the code. So this condition I just wrote, 1 is equal to 1, that's always going to be equal to true. And so if I run this, if I hit run, look what happens. It's never going to stop. So this code will never stop. This is an infinite loop. It's, it's evaluating you know very very fast it's it's looping right now we're not stepping through it but this is what it's doing it's going to the first line and it's checking is one equal to one? Oh, that's true okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna add one to that value then I'm gonna go down to this line loop it's gonna send me back to the top and is one equal to one yes oh that's true since it's always true basically you're just repeating this line infinitely many times so this will only stop uh, if my computer turns off or if I if I press the escape key many many times, uh, or so I can press the escape key right now, and I'll press it, and there we go. I press the escape key, and that loop stopped. So I could, uh, it says code execution has been interrupted, and that was me pressing the escape key. So now I can press debug, just to get out of that error message box, and that is an infinite loop. So you don't want that. You don't want to get into an infinite loop because you'll never, you know, something's wrong. You do not want a program that will never end. Um, so that is a do while loop. Uh, the main points of it are the, the keywords, do while, those are both keywords, and loop is a keyword. And then you're going to write a condition that's going to be checked. And if that condition is true, you're going to execute code. Once that condition is false, you're not going to execute the code. You're just going to fall out of the loop. And the other thing is that you can move this down to the bottom, 
And what that does is the first time through the loop, the condition is not going to be checked. You're just going to do this code automatically, no matter what. Uh, most times, though, you're going to keep it at the top. So I would say rule of thumb is just keep the while and the, and the condition to be checked at the top. Okay, so now that was an introduction to do while loops. The next video will be a short video on do until loops. They're very similar.